Hello, this is Mrs. Lewis again with today's lesson on absolute dating. When we talk about absolute dating, that means that we're, t we're finding the exact age of the rocks, not how old they are compared to some other rock, but actually, numerically, how long they have been here on Earth. And most of these rocks, the ages are going to be in millions of years. If we look at this rock strata here, we can see the difference. When we're talking about relative dating, we're saying that the older rocks are on the bottom here, and then as time went on, these rocks are younger. So they're relative to each other. But when we talk about absolute dating, we're talking about numerical dating. We're saying that this rock layer here has been there for 545 million years. It was laid down that long ago. The reason that we can find out how long these rocks have been around is because of radioactivity. And we know that the gradual breakdown of radioactive substances in rocks is the clock that scientists can use to figure out how old the rocks are. As the rocks break down, they're going to change from a radioactive material to some other material, and we can tell how long that rock's been around by how much it has decayed. Radioactive elements emit radiation, and they decay into elements that are not radioactive. For instance, Potassium-40 is a radioactive isotope, and it will decay and become argon-40, a stable daughter isotope. One of the most common ones that we use in dating rocks is uranium-238, which decays into lead-206. Each radioactive element decays at a constant rate and that rate is described by its half-life. So here we see a sample of a rock, and all of these yellow atoms here are representing the uranium in that rock. Well, after a certain time, a half-life, half of that uranium will have changed into lead. So here, half of these yellow atoms have changed into blue atoms. And then, after another half-life, half of those remaining yellow atoms will change into lead. And after another half-life, half of those yellow atoms will change into lead. The half-life is defined as the time for half of a given quantity of a radioactive substance to decay into another isotope. So here we have a mineral deposit, and most of the atoms in this mineral deposit are represented by these gray, this gray area here. Most of the atoms are not radioactive, but there are some atoms that are radioactive, and those are represented by the red stars. At time zero, we have a certain number of those red stars. After one half-life, half of those red stars have decayed into something else, these green dots here. After another half-life, then another half of those red stars will have decayed. And now there's four of them here. After the third half-life, half of those will have decayed, and there's only two remaining. The half-life of uranium-238 is 4.5 billion years. So that means that if we had one unit of radioactive uranium-238, after 4.5 billion years, only half of that would still be radioactive. And then after another 4.5 billion years, only one quarter of that would still be radioactive. Three quarters of it would have decayed. The radioactive element is called the parent isotope, and the element it turns into is called the daughter isotope. 
Here we can see that as the amount of parent isotope in red goes down with each half-life, the amount of daughter isotope, which is in gray, goes up. So the curve for radioactive decay looks like this. And this tells us that here we had 100% radioactive. After one half-life, 50% is radioactive. After two half-lives, then only 25% is radioactive, and so on. This graph here shows us the both curves. So here is the number of parent atoms that's going down, and this curve here shows us the number of daughter atoms that's going up at the same time. Geologists can go out into the field and can find rocks and grind them up and then use a very sophisticated process called mass spectroscopy in order to measure the amount of the parent isotope and the amount of the daughter isotope in a given rock sample. That's going to help us to figure out how old that rock is as an absolute measure, how many millions of years. Here are some radioactive clocks that can be used to measure and date rocks. As you can see, for most of these, the half-lives are very long indeed, except for carbon-14. Carbon-14 is going to be used to date things that were once alive. Since the decay curves are almost always the same shape, we can use these curves in order to figure out the age of a rock. Here we can see the relationship between what happens to the parent isotope using this curve and what happens to the daughter isotope using this curve. So after two half-lives, we would be right here, there is one quarter of the parent remaining we can see that on the graph right here. But at the same time, if we go up to the daughter isotope over here, we would see that there's three quarters of the daughter isotope. So therefore, at this point in time, we have the ratio of one quarter of the parent to three quarters of the daughter and that would be a ratio of 1 to 3. That's going to be very helpful to us when we go out and measure what's happened in the rocks. If we went out into the field and we found a rock, and we measured the amount of uranium-235 in that rock, and the amount of lead 207 in that rock, and we found out that there was a ratio of 1 to 3, we would know that two half-lives have passed. And then we know that the half-life of uranium-235 is 704 million years. So since two half-lives have taken place, we know that that rock is 1,408,000,000 years old. That's how scientists find the absolute age of a rock. We'll be working with some of this in class.